Hey, good morning to you. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Good afternoon if you're watching this later in the day. I got your tropical update for Invest 91L and what to expect, as well as the next wave that's coming right behind it and another one that's coming off the coast of Africa. And Noah's already predicting to be at least a tropical depression on both of them. Never been here before. Hello, <laughs> my name is Mark. I do upload every single day, just not Friday from sundown to Saturday from sundown. That is Sabbath, but I will make sure you're covered. Matter of fact, I took yesterday off as well because I had my shoulder messing up really bad and I couldn't do anything, but it's getting better now. My wife has taken really good care of me, so God bless her. I also do an update video every afternoon during hurricane season so we can stay ahead of the tropics. So far, what's going on lately, this will cover everything for the time being since it is Labor Day. Happy Labor Day, everybody. There won't be a second video this afternoon because of that. I'm just going to sit back and relax some more and let my shoulder rest some more. <laughs> All I ask is if you know somebody that's in the way of these impacts that I'm showing you, please share this on social media. Help alert others. Thank you so much for your help. If you don't use social media, just hit the like button. YouTube will do it for you. Now, Invest 91L has been neandering across the whole Gulf, and matter of fact, it's going to stay that way until it crosses over Florida. A lot of model data shows that it could start ramping up as it gets in the middle of the Gulf, away from this upper level low in the wind shear and the dry air, and start maybe doing something as it starts moving. That's in a couple of days. We will stay on top of it. Update on Louisiana power outage. You're right above half a million homes without power still, and everybody's starting to get power back except St. John the Baptist. Assumptions, St. James, Terrebonne, even Lafouche. They're still 95 to 100% without power still. Now, as of 2 o'clock this morning, it is still at 30%. This thing's been neandering across the Gulf 30% all the way. Plus, pretty soon we're about to get a little area of investigation soon because the next wave I'm still showing is still following behind this system, and it is somewhat being a stronger one. The next wave coming through the Caribbean is just a few days right behind Invest 91L. And it's been showing for a long time a lot greater potential of something we need to watch out for. Plus, the next wave coming off the coast of Africa is already predicted to be at least a tropical depression in strength. And still, Major Hurricane Larry is at 120 miles per hour right now and is moving northwest at 12 miles per hour. As a matter of fact, I'm showing the wave height is just crazy. Now, according to NOAA, from September 4th to September 7th, we do have an area that we need to watch out for for any formation. That's what we're watching out for now, 91L. And we have one that's going to be coming off the coast of Africa. Matter of fact, when we get from September 8th through September 14th, that's when that next wave is coming through. NOAA's already shown a development for a tropical depression or a greater strength is already going to be in the northern half of the Gulf of Mexico. Plus, that next wave coming off is already predicted to be at least a tropical depression and strength as well. Now this is Invest 91L looking at the upper troposphere and you can see it just cannot breathe at all. It's getting dry air, it's fighting with it's upper level low over here that's just going to follow with it, giving it shear the whole time. If you look at the lower level water vapor, you can see that it's pretty disorganized because of all the shear coming to it. But you can see over here when it starts getting away from that dry air and that shear that it starts to try and get a little more robust. We just need to keep our eye on it because all the data has been showing that it would be a last minute development. Hopefully it just stays elongated in between these two pressures. We've got a high pressure here. We've got the high pressure of the cold front coming here. And it's going to squeeze right in between and elongate it. So hopefully that stays that way. Now in the previous runs for Invest 91L, it has shown many times that it has strengthened in the last second and get close to shore. But lately on the lately runs, you can see that it did stay weak and it pretty much is going to neander across as a weak system. The Euro even confirms that it will be right here by the Florida Panhandle and it will somewhat be a weak system and strengthen up as it crosses over. So there's, there is a good chance it could be some effects for southeast Georgia, maybe the coast of South Carolina and North Carolina as this leaves. Now if you look at the diagnostics from Invest 91L, you can see right here that when you look at your deep layer shear, and you can see that it's getting a lot of shear. It's going all the way up to 20 to 25, even times almost up to 30 knot wind shear. So that is very strong and is definitely going to keep it handicapped where it can't do anything. And if you look over here on the wind speed, this is in knots. You can see it was stronger. It was almost to 25, maybe 30 knots. But it's weakened way down as it gets closer towards the landfall, all the way down to pretty much nothing. So it is going to get elongated by these two high pressures and pretty much not be able to get its circulation back. And this right here will show you exactly what's going on with it. You can see it with the cold front. You can see all the precipitation getting together. 
as a cold front comes down off the southeast and we do have another cold front coming around the 20s guys and it's supposed to be an even colder one then as it gets towards shore you can see how it's going to hit with the cold front you can also see right here it lost its vortex as it was coming on land it had a vortex and it lost it it got elongated it's going to lose its vortex and just go straight across the southeast mostly over florida south carolina georgia Southeast Alabama will get some, maybe even southeast of Louisiana from maybe some bands that's going around from the, trying to grow, but it's not the system itself. The system looks like it's totally going to miss Louisiana barely and bring all the heavy precipitation, mostly over Florida, Georgia, pieces of South Carolina. And we have to keep our eye on that next wave as well because it's showing a lot of very dangerous levels on it and a lot of previous runs. So according to the Euro, this is Invest 91L. You can see it's just a big glob of precipitation. It can't hold itself together. And that's where it lost its vortex right there where I just showed you where it's all elongated and it goes across Florida. Then the cold front comes down. And as the second wave comes through the Caribbean, literally on the 10th, you can see it's just days away and it does stay pretty weak. The cold front goes away. It starts moving towards Texas. And that's where it's been showing for a while now that Texas actually could be the target and it, hopefully it stays a big glob of thunderstorms and it's just a rain event. However, the runs in the past have shown anything from a tropical storm to a very strong hurricane. The latest GFS run does confirm it that it stays a big glob of disorganized thunderstorms as it moves across the southeast. It's just getting squeezed in between two high pressures. You got the cold front here with the high pressure. You got a high pressure here with some dust in it and dry air. And it's just getting elongated. And as the second wave moves through the Gulf of Mexico, it does start to wander up a little bit. But so far, all that moisture so far is going towards Texas because we get that next cold front around the 13th and the 14th. And I'm showing we have one around the 20th that's going to go even deeper. And as you keep following the wave to see it, it still tries to form in the Gulf. It stays there for quite a bit. You can see that cold front coming on the 20th coming down and it is a big whopper of a cold front so it definitely should be blocking it if it tries to do anything it's really going to be a time scale and a previous run shows that on the 12th that second wave coming in here actually could do something right there it turns into a very strong system goes towards louisiana and texas cold front coming down not really affecting it much you take a look at it you can see it comes in pretty much a glob of upper level low and a glob of thunderstorms not really much to look at but it stays there in the bay of campeche and the gulf of mexico and it starts to strengthen all the way down to hurricane status so far towards louisiana and texas now i've seen this go towards texas many times with very high numbers of what is now i've seen this go towards texas many times with very low pressures very strong 950s and scary looking but that is not trending anymore so hopefully that stays away and it don't do that now it does show somewhat that it will be bringing some high waves somewhat as is going through towards florida and that green right there is anywhere from eight to nine foot waves then you see a little more out in the gulf and you see over here on larry's you see the big 49 49 50 foot waves okay that's believable but right here in the center it says that it's 70 foot waves like, uh, that's pretty powerful but if you look up here it even says that it goes up to 94 feet for the max. And that just seems a little too high. <laughs> I can believe the 49 to 50 foot waves, even maybe the 70, but it's kind of on a weakening phase. So it's unbelievable. I don't know what this 94 is. Still a long strip doing a lot of big heavy waves. So it's very dangerous. Hope nobody's out there with any boating whatsoever. You can see it will bring a lot of riptides, dangerous activities on the whole Eastern coast. So all the way from Florida all the way to Maine, you need to watch out for rip currents because it's going to be pretty dangerous. And as you move through, you see that next wave that's coming through the Caribbean. So far, that one shows that it's still headed towards Texas. So that seems to be the, the location that it's headed for for a while now. It's either been Texas or Mexico. It showed Louisiana a few times, uh, but thankfully that has stopped. Now it's just showing Texas or maybe Mexico. Now, this is a video from Hurricane Zeta, and it's actually had 50-foot waves. So this is what those waves will be looking like out there next to Larry on the low end of the 50. The 70 and the 100, I really just cannot believe it that much because it's on a weakening phase. But look at these huge waves coming from Hurricane Zeta. That is 50 
foot weight. This guy is on an oil rig in the Gulf of Mexico. I used to be on a supply boat and go back and forth with those. Those guys do a lot of hard work. And they're way up, way up above the, the Gulf, so you can't get hit by anything. These 50 foot waves are actually bringing water up by his feet, way on top of the oil rig. That is amazing. 50 foot waves from Hurricane Zeta even splashing on top of a big oil rig that is way off the ground. And this is a big container ship that encountered, as a matter of fact, 100 foot waves. So if that number was right, this is what the waves look by Larry out there, 100 foot, not 50 foot. That's pretty extraordinary for a system that's somewhat on a week. Still, there's 100 foot waves. Now, I've never seen 100 foot waves. That's once again, these video links are in the description so you can watch it. Now, the latest run from the GFS shows great things. If you look at all the members, you can see it's pretty much nothing. It's an upper level low meandering across the Gulf, and it's not going to do anything. However, that next wave that is literally a couple of days behind it does show right here, like on 11, that it could go into the Gulf and start to intensify and go towards Texas. And it's been showing that a lot towards Texas. And one of the one that worries me is what I've been seeing a lot from the system. It just started to show that it could be some weakening, like what happened in Invest 91L. That would be great. We see right here on 20, it showed Louisiana and it showed Texas before. It even showed Mexico. I don't know what it's going to do when this cold front comes, but so far it shows it will intensify and go towards one of the Gulf states. That's been showing a lot. That's still up in the air according to what the cold front might do to it. Cause we do have that second blast coming sometime from the 9th all the way through the 12th. So that should suppress it and keep it in the Gulf. If not push it towards Mexico, it will go somewhere towards southern Texas if that still comes. The only issue with that is the GFS shows it's the 9th and the 10th. Euro shows that it goes all the way to the 12th. So the GFS shows that it could get into the Gulf and it don't get suppressed. The Euro shows that the cold front suppresses it. So we definitely need to update this. Plus we have that next one that is coming, going a little bit further, all the way from the 15th, all the way through the 20th. And this one's gonna go a little bit deeper in our country, bring a little bit colder air. We are literally in the last day of summer unofficially today. And according to the Euro, the total rainfall so far within the next three days get into the Gulf. In five days, it should be crossing over Florida, bringing very light rainfall, disorganized showers. And in 10 days, when that next storm comes by, so far it's showing going towards Texas. The GFS confirms in three days it will be in the center of the Gulf, and in five days it will be going across Florida. However, it's bringing some heavier rainfall towards South Carolina like it starts to ramp up as it leaves. But when you go to 10 days, you can see also anywhere, anywhere from Texas all the way to Mexico is where that next wave is hitting. And that next cold front, this is the 15th, so far is bringing 40s and 50s to people across the Midwest and Northwest and the Northeast. On the 16th, it's gonna come down a little bit deeper where you're definitely in the 40s from the Midwest, some of the Ohio Valley and the Northeast. On the 18th is when that big push is gonna come and you're gonna get 40s all across the whole Northwest and the Midwest. There's a bunch of 40s and it's gonna bring the coldness all the way to the South. And so far by the 21st, it rushes all the way down towards the South, bringing 50s and 60s across the whole deep South 40s across Ohio Valley and the Midwest. And it's going to go even deeper. Matter of fact, I'm sure it can go all the way into the Gulf down here. It's just a little too far to be accurate right now. And that's it, guys. Just a quick update on what's going on with the tropics. We do need to watch this next wave. Thank God Invest 91L hopefully stays a bu big bunch of disorganized thunderstorms. The model data we've seen before has shown that it does form up in the last push through the Gulf of Mexico. So I'll stay on top of it, make sure so far it's looking just like some disorganized thunderstorms and it stays that way. The wind shear is pretty strong. But God bless every single one of you today. Hope you have a very blessed day, especially for those that's taking your Labor Day. Thank you so much for working so hard all year. <laughs> God bless you. Uh, today I want to read something for y'all. Hope you have a great day today. I will see y'all first thing in the morning. Psalm 63. O oh God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee, my flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land, where no water is, to see thy power and thy glory, so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. 
because thy loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. When I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches, because thou hast been my help, therefore in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. My soul followeth hard after thee, thy right hand upholdeth me. But those that seek my soul to destroy it, and shall go into the lower parts of the earth, they shall fall by the sword, they shall be a portion for foxes. But the king shall rejoice in God. Every one that sweareth by him shall glory, but the mouth of them that speak lies shall be stopped. Amen. God bless you all today. Have a very great day today. Thank you so much for visiting my channel today. I missed you all yesterday. <laughs> I could not move my arm. It'll get better, Lord willing, when it's time to right. I'll see you first thing in the morning. Have a great day. All glory. Does go to Yahweh. God of Jacob. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah, guys. Happy Labor Day. <laughs>